everyone how is everything going um, today is going to be the second insta live that i'm doing ever in my life uh, this is again going to be a discussion on violent technique before i move forward i would like to tell you um, some sad news uh, my violent guru t rukmani mami passed away yesterday um, she was uh, she was ill for a couple of years and yesterday uh, we lost her she is known as the queen of violin playing for those of you who know her one of the very few women in her time to make it as an accompanist it's a big loss for the carnatic fraternity and so it's it's pretty uh, sad to hear of uh, this news having said that uh, we must go on to this discussion of violin technique uh as i said i did one uh, discussion about a couple of months ago and then i started a online violin course the course went great uh we took the course for about uh, 19 students from india uh france us singapore malaysia and uh, that course is done and i'm starting the next course which is on the 15th of june so i thought why not uh, do another live answer any questions that you might have about uh, violent technique about fusion music about carnatic music i'm throwing it open whatever you guys feel like asking me i'm happy to play it i see a lot of people asking uh, for requests hi flute shiva how are you doing the piece that i just played was uh, telisi rama uh, composition of uh, saint tyagaraja siddhat kumar uh, sid dot keys at at sid dot keys has uh, uh, accompanied me on this this is part of my uh, personal youtube channel called flow it's called flow with kartik ayer i'm coming up with some branding for it uh, you can find a lot of the videos over there and of course indo soul as well uh, a lot of the releases that we've been doing during the lockdown so yeah so i'm going to throw it open for questions uh, what questions do you guys have on the violin technique um if you're interested in the crash course uh, i have carrying the link of the course on my bio or if you are watching this on uh, youtube it will be in the description below so let's go i'm just going to check all the comments okay so what i'm going to do is if there are no questions i'm happy to answer and play all your requests all right um uh, i've been asked for clowns junket kava va Okay Vishnu R Verma about western bowing techniques in carnatic music okay and uh, so shriraj asks sir do you change the tuning of the violin according to the scale of the song let me answer the second one first because that's the easier one to answer when i'm playing concerts for uh, fusion i always carry two violins with me and uh, i ensure that between both the violins i am able to have the tuning that i need for the song that's how i started with but as time went on i'm uh, also learned to play two scales in a in the violin for example i am on d so i also know how to play g and that's how we can develop it gets easier for us to you know play for different songs if we are uh, you know able to play more than a couple of scales uh, so that it's not like we have to change every time or change the tuning i do have a bit of match fixing with the band just to understand uh, what songs there are and i adjust the songs also a little bit so that it's a little bit easy during the concert western bowing techniques in carnatic music the main thing that i talk about in my course is uh, at the very fundamental how to hold the bow so this is what we are talking about and this comes from the western technique indeed the way you hold the bow with all the fingers in this position and the way you can sort of play all across with this bow hold this is a very very important bow hold each finger has its position and the place where it touches it is all important so this is important for us to get a smooth bow stroke all the way you know it gets very tough when you are playing near the frog and of course you have that's a spiccato so 
So what's important with this bow hold is this is a starting point to see how your wrist can move okay, and how your fingers can move. That's a trill where uh, a tremolo sorry where you can play with just the fingers. You see my hand doesn't move at all. So at the start of everything is this bow hold which we handle in the course. Um, sanitizer to your coronavirus kindly tell us how double octaves are played with some tips to follow if you're asking me how to go up the scale so this is positional theory so you move to the third position where your index finger is on the let me move the camera where the index finger is on the sa and if you want to go all the way to pa, I move to the fifth position. Same way for for ma, you have the index finger. So once you get the plain notes, I always say get the plain notes stronger, and then you will be able to uh, much better play your gamakas on it. Have you tried uh, mixing jazz and Carnatic techniques? You know, Bala, I've always wanted to, I've always been interested in jazz because for me, the equivalent of Carnatic music is not Western classical, but jazz because there is so much improvisation in both. And um, my main inspiration is El Shankar, who uh, did a lot of this stuff with the Mahavishnu Orchestra, uh, no, sorry, with Shakti, as well as Frank Zappa. So I feel like... Um, Although I haven't gotten too deep into jazz, that's always something that I've been wanting to do. It's a very, very interesting combination. It's a very powerful combination where Carnatic is monophonic and you have the ragas that are so strong and you have jazz that is so strong in polyphony and harmony. And if you mix it, it's going to be like a very deadly combination. Most of the Carnatic players are not using the violin grip discussed last time. Why is so? I'm not sure what you mean. If you talk about the bow hold, we've already discussed that. Um, I love Indo Soul. Thank you very much. Indo Soul is uh, probably going to come with a concert soon. It's going to be a public concert. I'll keep you updated on my channel as well as on Indo Soul's channel. It will be a public show, probably on Zoom. So, you know, you can. Uh, you can probably, yeah, wait for it. Wait for the news. This is just today, okay? It's just today that we are starting to discuss it. I haven't even spoken to the musicians yet. So, uh, wait for the news on that. And you can watch Indo Soul hopefully live very, very soon. Suma Karnam. Can you talk about the ideal string tension and how to choose strings for a given Shruti? So, I use Pirastro Chrome Core. Okay. Uh, the important thing is you can use any string but as you put pressure on the string you shouldn't have the Shruti going up. So here you see the Shruti is not going up. It's like when that sort of happens when you put pressure and the Shruti goes up it means that your string tension is not uh, enough. It needs to be more tense so increase the Shruti, if that doesn't work, change the string. I've heard that coronet strings are pretty decent and pretty cost effective. I'm waiting for the lockdown to finish for me to even try it out so that I could make a, a complete recommendation for uh, my students. But check out coronet. I hear that it's very, it's pretty decent. Pirastro Chrome Core is excellent. Uh, however, it's, it's pretty expensive, about 3,500, I think, a set. I use... Um, ADGC. So ADG from the violin uh, pirastro and C from the viola. So that's uh, what I do. I use just the viola string only for the C so that I can have the lower sa on it. Of course, I'm using my five string now, but I'm talking with respect to a four string. There is Ram Kumar saying scale fixing. Say everyone say hello to Ram. Ram from Indosol. Ram Kumar Kanakarajan. Gamakas for Western players. Okay, so I have a whole elective. The way I work out my course is I have core technique, which is basically bowing and left hand. 
and I have gamakas uh, and I have electives in which I uh, have how to do kalpanaswaram, how to do gamakas, how to play a film song, how to do a western solo on chords, how to play fast. So I have these as electives which uh, one can, uh, you know, choose from in terms of whatever you're interested in. For western players, the main unit of a gamaka is the slide. So we start with uh, one finger slide, two finger, three finger and even four finger slide. So very shortly I'll explain it. Um, that's a one finger slide. When you're sliding between two fingers, so you drop your fingers so slowly and you find the tone is going in a straight line without any steps. Okay, and that's the three finger slide because I start here and I move to here through the middle finger. Again, I can talk for over an hour about gamakas, but this for me is the basic unit uh, of the gamakas. If you learn this, then you'll be able to do Wherever you see there is the slide that's happening. Since we are on Canada, I want to play you a song before I move to the next question. So if you guys have heard the Simpson themes, the Simpson theme goes like So that's the Simpsons theme. So I thought why not uh, do that in the Raga Kannada. So, and do that as an intro to this uh, wonderful song in the Raga Kannada. You obviously know what it, what it is. Again, Sid on the piano.
All right. I feel like I'm an RJ when I'm doing this, fading out uh, tracks and going on into conversation. So I'm going to try and get to all your questions. I'm well behind in the questions. So if I haven't gotten your question, please wait. Bhavana Rokam says, how much tight shall we fix the bow? That's a very good question. So as you all know, here is the, the tightness adjuster. You loosen it and you tighten it. I try and keep it this tight. Like you see the length between this. I sort of keep it around 80% tightness. I don't like it being too loose. I like the fact that I like the fact that the bow can bounce, right? And also uh, a good hygiene for violinists when you're not using the bow, please loosen the bow so that your strings become this loose, okay? It's very important because this curve that you see, this curve is very important for many things in our bowing playing. So it's very important that you keep it loosened when you're not playing it. I'm going to move on to the next question. In Carnatic, whether any position about three is used, PR Raj? Yes, uh, mainly I would say it's the first position and the third position. But as I said, the fifth position to get to Gamma Pa is also important. I just played and showed it to you. So that's Gamma Pa. Of course, uh, when you're playing the gamakas, you play it in a slightly different style if you have started playing in a certain way. I don't use the fifth position much, but I think on a Western perspective, that's the perfect one to use. Maravairi Ramani goes crazily good with jazz. That's a very interesting observation. I know uh, singer Haricharan has done a version of it, which I really like. Uh, it's an interesting song uh, with, uh, with the Vivadi notes. Anish Vadakkan, can you show me the octave once again? That's the octave with the third and the fifth position. Which DAW software are you using? I'm using the Logic. You know, I got tired of the Logic and then I said I'm going to move to Ableton and when the lockdown started, I started learning Ableton. But then Logic came up with this amazing update, 10.5 which has a bit of uh, Ableton, which has a bit of Fruity Loops. So I've gone back to Logic and I'm a, I'm a loyal, back to being a loyal user of Logic. I love Windows Soul. Thank you very much, Antri Ami. It keeps hanging every three seconds. I hope everyone's not facing this issue. Um, Oh God, okay. Hang on, let me see what I can do. Give me a second. I just checked with my wife outside. She's saying it's fine, but anyway. Let's see if uh, it responds again, if it happens again. How do you get hold of your violin while you do a uh, standing performance? That's a very good question. So an important uh, part of uh, playing standing is uh, the shoulder rest. So what you do is place the shoulder rest like this and hands free, the violin stays here. So a combination of the shoulder rest and the chin rest is going to help your violin stay. So you can play. So that shoulder rest is a very, very important uh, part of uh, standing and playing. How do you maintain Tala while playing Carnatic songs? Look, that's a very good question. Uh, ideally, you would want to play, you would want to put your tala on your leg. I don't do it, uh, but that's what my guru said is to use the tala on the leg. I don't play much of traditional Carnatic, so when I have the metronome, I don't miss the tala too much. 
Having said that, if you are playing solo on a concert, it's always best to get your uh, someone to put the tala in front of you because that's the only way it works, especially when you're playing long kalpana swarams. Um, songs, it's okay. You know where the songs are. You know how it works. So songs are also fine. But when you're playing the long kalpana swarams and in between charanam and pallavi and pallavi and anapallavi, it's always useful to have someone putting the tala. Hi, sir. I'm a Western student. Jijo says, can you suggest any techniques to practice for getting the Carnatic flow? Like when playing ragas, those finger shifts make music so beautiful. So, Jijo, I just discussed this. I don't want to repeat myself because there are a lot of questions. I'm going to post this video on IGTV after this. So, if you've missed uh, what I spoke about Gamaka and the one, two, three finger slide, you can check it out. Carnatic, if you want to get to Carnatic, it's about getting into Gamaka. That's the main thing. And that will be your introduction into uh, playing Carnatic. Charubala is planning to buy an electric violin. Would you suggest Tulsi? I would suggest Tulsi. I, I, I like the Tulsi. You know, um, I used to have a Yamaha. Then I played a Jordan. And then I started with a Tulsi. Yamaha, Jordan. And then I came back to a Tulsi. Because I feel like the Tulsi violin is as close as possible to an uh, acoustic violin. Um, it doesn't have that fat synthetic sound. Again, it's a question of taste. A lot of violinists prefer the cantini. They prefer the fat synthetic sound. I'm not a big fan of that. I like it to sound... Being an electric violin, I like it to sound as natural as possible. Who's your Carnatic music guru? I learned for over 10, 11 years from Sri V. Tyagarajan and then for a year, year and a half from Srimati T. Rukmani who I started by saying who passed away yesterday, sadly. Uh, my... First Guru, Vityagarajan Mama also is no more. Then I learnt uh, Western Violin from V.S. Narasimhan sir. And uh, those are my uh, gurus on the violin. I learnt uh, vocal from uh, uh, my my uh, uh, grand uncle Sri Kalkata Krishnamurti. Then from mm -hmm. Akila Shiva Mami and then from Vijay Shivarna. And then I went on to learn Western vocal from Augustine sir. Now I'm doing my voice uh, class with uh, Shamala Vinod ma'am and I'm having really great results. That's something that I'm doing presently. Um, J -A 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 -A. I started playing violin six months back. I feel it's difficult in playing multiple notes in a single bow. So there is a very nice exercise called sun file. Again, let me start by saying the basis of everything is your bow hold. Once you get your bow hold, you're, you're crossing half the distance. Sun file is an interesting exercise where you keep your metronome at 60 and you keep your bow as close as possible to the bridge, almost on top of the bridge and play extremely slowly. So you go on at 60 BPM, it's 60 beats per minute, so each beat is a second, right? You want to go on for at least 30 seconds. To start with, I would say, aim for 20 seconds. From here till here, 20 counts. Aim for 30 as you get more comfortable and then back. Do that on each string. Keep your fingers as relaxed as possible, okay? And aim for and put have a nice uh, lot of rosin on the bow. Uh, that helps and aim for 80-90% tone like there will be gaps in tone you might have dropping of tone here and there that's fine but aim for 80-90% tone this is one of the most powerful exercises in bowing it's called sun file you can look it up it's very popular if you do this for a week you will start to see immediate effects on your playing um, that's something that I recommend even I do it on an everyday basis. Son filet, as the French word goes, it's very, very important. What this does is you're able to... Uh, so you can play a lot of notes uh, because it extends the amount of time that you take to go from one side to the other. So, uh, I'm just where people are talking about Alai Pai Day. Looks like I'm lagging a lot. Let me go forward. 
I'm just thank you for all your comments. I really appreciate it. I'm going to stop when I see a comment on on violent technique. Arvind OS, how to improve fast shifting of finger from one to another string? So, shifting of finger from one to the another. So. So, playing fast. See, I don't know if you're asking me about shifting strings or playing fast. I'll answer both. Playing fast is a combination of bowing fast and playing fast. So, when it comes to playing fast, it's about how fast you drop and lift off your fingers. Okay? And bowing fast is how you can use your wrist and fingers to play fast. If you can see, I'm playing so fast, but my arm is hardly moving. All the work is done by my fingers. So you need to improve both the bowing as well as the fingers because you're only as fast as your slowest component, right? So that's, I take a whole elective called fast bowing and uh, fingers. It will be part of the course that starts on June 15th as well. If you're interested in the course, please uh, check my bio. I have all the details there. Uh, you'll have to register and uh, you can join in. It's going to be a, it's going to be a five week course, five sessions, core technique with respect to bowing fingers. And there's a set of electives, seven electives from which you can choose. As far as string crossing goes, string crossing is very important and very interesting because it involves the wrist a lot. So when you're playing with the bow, you have three kinds of wrists. One is the low wrist, where the wrist is lower than the bow. One is the neutral wrist, and one is the high wrist. So when you are playing fast string crossing, what you're doing is rather replacing a big motion on the arm. You're you're making it much smaller with respect to just a wrist motion. See, my arm doesn't move. That's the way to get uh, better string crossing. What's very important to note is, as you move in the mechanics, in the biomechanics of a body, as you move from your shoulder to your upper arm, to your forearm, to your wrist, to your fingers, the movement that is needed to make a certain amount of motion becomes lesser and lesser. For instance, so I have to move this much to move from one string to the other. Let me do that with my wrist. Now let me try and do that with my finger. So a little motion here replaces a, a large motion here. And as your motion becomes smaller and smaller, you're able to control it much uh, better. Imagine having to do this to change something, but if you just do this, you're able to control it better and you're also able to play fast with it. I hope that answers your question, Naravind. I look like Bas Bala Baskar. Uh, thank you very much. Bala Baskar, of course, is... Uh, it's sad we don't have him. He's one of the pioneers uh, who started with the electric violin and who... Uh, you know, he was, uh, when I started doing electric violin, there were three, four of them. And one of the top guys was, uh, of course, Bala Bhaskar on the fusion scene and Ganesh Kumaresh on the Carnatic scene. Now there are uh, many, many, many electric violinists. And I'm I'm sure it's all thanks to people like Bala Bhaskar who have uh, helped promote the electric violin and the violin in a sense. I felt like there was a time when the violin sort of took a dip, but now it's so nice to see so many violinists coming. I'm a Western student. Can we learn Carnatic with Western tuning in fifths? Yes, you can. Uh, you just need to learn how to play it. It's a slightly detailed discussion, but as long as you can make it sound the same, it's possible. It is possible. Hello, sir. Do you play left-handed? I'm a left-hander. I was told that there wasn't a left-handed violin. That's a very good question. Uh, the left-handed violin is the same as this. 
just that uh, let me try and attempt playing left hand it's going to look very very funny but it's pretty much the same you hold your bow on your left hand and your first string will be my last string so this is the low sa for me so this is going to be this string so basically your whole setup changes where you have you have the last string become the first string the whole thing inverses apart from that the technique is pretty much the same so the only problem that left handers face is when you are playing here this nut is a little farther than this nut is if you look at this nut so this nut is closer the problem is the, the advantage is this is farther so that we are able to play notes like this when you are playing left hand this comes in the way you will have to go to a luthier luthier is the name of a violin repairer and get that sorted you just have to adjust the nuts to be different mine is a five string so yours is going to have four nuts you need to move you need to drill the holes so that it doesn't come in the way um how do you set the perfect sounding for your violin with processors and mixer okay this is a very interesting question where uh, what i talk about when i handle this uh, this subject is i talk about three main e uh, effects one is eq another one is delay and another one is reverb with these three you are able to get a nice tone on your violin these are not the only three but these are good enough for you to get started with uh, whatever processor you use or if you're using a daw like i'm doing right now you will be able to uh, you'll be able to get a nice uh, perfect sounding for your violin the eq helps to keep the violin sounding beautiful all the frequencies that you don't like you can remove again it's a longer subject but i do carry this as an elective how to avoid too much jumping of the bow so i'm going to answer this question and jump into a song i have a I have a very special AR Rahman song coming up next. I want to play that for you. So what happens when we are playing from one side to the other? In the middle, the bow would starts jumping. This happens because our fingers when they are here they are in one position and when they are here they are in another position. Basically at the at the heel, this is the heel, this is the point. okay at the heel they are like this and at the point they are like this so let me so from here to here this has to happen only if this happens your bow stops bouncing so a simple exercise to do is when you are playing at the heel okay guys get the terminology that i'm going to be repeating that probably during this heel middle point okay so as you are moving from the heel to the point remove the first finger then drop it a few inches later then start removing your fingers one by one until you reach the end okay then once you come back drop the fingers again and remove the first finger so you, second time you do this a few times and the next set same remove the first finger remove only the two fingers only two fingers come back put these fingers remove it third time remove only the little finger okay and the fourth time don't remove any of the fingers but as you're moving from here to here just feel the weight distribution across the four fingers that is changing so automatically what you're looking for is for this to happen so when this happens your fingers are being alive they're adjusting on the bow and hence the bounciness that we have which also affects the tone goes away so that's an important of course again i keep reiterating again and again and again like a broken record your bow hold is very important guys the bow hold is uh, at the very core of uh, getting all these techniques down okay here comes a very very special song you will know what it is from the first note
was uh, Malar Khali from Lovebirds. Getting back to your questions, how many hours uh, do a beginner have to practice? It would be great if you can get one hour done every day. Uh, but if you're working and if you're not able to play for one hour, keep it half an hour. What I would suggest is, even if you can get 20 minutes to half an hour on a day, do it. Don't wait for the ideal day where you have an hour, hour and a half. What happens with our fingers is that we have muscle memory. And this muscle memory with days, it dips down. So each time we practice, after a gap, we are picking up from where we left. So this sort of a thing is happening. So what I'd like to suggest is, even if you play 20 minutes every day, say you have your college or your work, you, you're going to keep keep it going slowly but steadily up because you're not playing catch up. So it's very important to keep our ourselves familiar with the instrument, play regularly and uh, keep things much more familiar and grow. Very importantly, choose your exercises. What is the left hand technique? What is right hand technique? And put both together and practice one after the other. You know, if you get one hour, then do a bit of both. If you get uh, only half an hour, then do left hand one day, right hand the other day. And ensure you follow technique practice with song practices. We'll start with technique, then go to song and improvisation so that the technique helps you improve across the board. All the songs that you're playing will improve because of a technique practice. Okay. And then you play the songs, whatever you're playing which I like to call as an un unconscious, uh, what, what I like to call as conscious application, which is a technique. When you play a song without even thinking about the technique, it gets applied. That I call as unconscious application. So it's important to do this in this order. NS design, I don't, uh, I didn't like the sound too much. I tried it out in a store. I didn't like it that, that much. But I haven't used it so much to comment on it as well. Uh, Alan J. Tom, I'm posting this video on IGTV and on YouTube. I've answered this question. Uh, slides is your answer. Okay. Indo Soul is bliss. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, Indo Soul, hopefully, we'll be playing soon. We'll be playing a public concert on Zoom or a Google. I'll keep you posted. We're just working on it. How to alternate, Bala Viola says, how to alternate between ga and knee, different strings very quickly. That's a very interesting question. So what you do is when you place your finger, you place it in between the strings. So what I'm doing is, I'm having my finger not in ga, not in knee, I'm placing it in between. You see, so that it's in a specific angle. Okay, so you're able to play both without lifting your fingers. If you're talking about ga to and knee one, stuff like that, it's a bit tough. You'll have to use the index finger for that. And stuff like that. But I think you're referring, to, I, I think uh, I've answered what you're referring to. I have trouble scaling the high pitch notes on the first thing I learned Carnatic for what's the best way to practice. You need to get uh, into what is called as... Um, Position theory, which is basically, I've discussed this as well, third position, fifth position, and uh, that's what you need to do. Um, you can refer to the first part of the video for for the answer to that. Um, Divya, Divya Dhani is asking for bowing techniques applicable to playing Thanam. So when you play Thanam, we place more of the staccato. Staccato is when you start with a pinch of the bow, And it's like sa 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 instead of sa 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 so so it's a it's basically what you need to do with a staccato it's a long topic it involves you biting down on the string a little bit So that's how staccato works and that's what you use in Thanambo. Uh, 
uh, answered about NS design. Also, wish the scale and same string, please advise. Uh, will it be best if I join your crash course to learn these techniques or does it need a... Okay, uh, in answer to rags, what I'm doing with uh, this course is I am giving you basic bowing technique and when I'm talking about basic, it's not for beginners or it's not for intermediates. It's basically the fundamental how to hold your bow, how to make your wrist move, how to make, uh, you know, the proper bowing, how to bow all the way. So I feel like these fundamentals are very important when you want to learn staccato. Uh, so I'm carrying a lot of exercises. I have a PDF that I give with a lot of exercises that's to do with bowing. Then I also give a lot of exercises with respect to left hand uh, technique. I've been influenced by a lot of uh, books like Simon Fisher, Sevichik. And uh, I've adapted a lot of exercises from them for Carnatic study. So that's the core technique. Amongst the electives, I have gamakas. I have how to play a film song as a Carnatic violinist. I have um, home studio processing electric violin as one. I have fast bone fingers. I have vibrato. I have um, how to play Kalpana Swaram and how to solo on Western chords. These are the seven electives which you are free to choose anything that you want. That's for this course. In a future course, probably the next course, I will carry something on position playing. Uh, but I feel like a lot of elaborate things are done during this course where it's not just this month. It will leave you with exercises that you can learn for, you know, six months or nine months or 12 months. Um, so that's how the first course has worked. And I'm carrying a very similar mode for the second one as well. The course is going to be detailed. I'm going to give you curated videos at the end of it with each technique. And you're free to take the Zoom recording of the full course so that you can check that later as a reference. Uh, and also some audio tools that will help you, you know, playing with metronome and stuff like that. So what I like to do is to start from the basic, uh, how best to practice, then go to bowing, then go to uh, left hand playing how to strengthen your plain notes, then how to strengthen your uh, gamakas on top of that, and then go for all the other topics. If you need more details, uh, you can go to my link on my bio. It carries a, is a link where you can follow whatever is happening for the course and you can register. The course starts from June 15th onwards. Uh, why every violinist use electric violin instead of acoustic violin with pickup? So, with acoustic violin with pickup, there is problem of feedback. So electric violin is better because the pickup is right here. There is no chamber and there is no feedback that happens. So I definitely feel like the electric, if you want to play on an electric amplified mode, an electric violin is better than an acoustic violin. Tuning techniques for beginners, please. Um, okay, there's not much time left, but this is an important question for beginners. It's an important question for intermediates. It's an important question for a lot of people. I'm going to um, change my camera to show you. Okay. Do you see my computer there? So what I do is I use a tuner. Okay, if you can see my tuner, hang on, I haven't marked the track. Yeah. Okay, so I feel like it's very important for us to tune with a digital tuner just for our open strings because. When we tune with our open, when we tune with the digital tuner, we are accurate. Now let me see my tuning. I'm on D, so we have D A D A. I just tuned before I started this live, but because of the AC that's behind me, I've gone slightly flat, as you can see. So I'm going to tune up. My A string is slightly sharp. So this is the best way to for us to tune. Again, I'm just giving you a brief uh, idea of how it works. Um, 
I'll handle that a uh, bit more in detail in the course. Son Phile. Yes, uh, Shan Srinath. Uh, that's one of my students from the first course uh, who knows French, so she knows the correct pronunciation. Are there any fingers uh, exercises that you recommend? Sevichik is very good. Shraddik is very good. Let me send you as a comment. Sevichik. Again, you need to sort of know uh, what is uh, how to read Western notes to get these all stuff like that. But uh, these are extremely good uh, finger exercises. As far as uh, Carnatic music is concerned, there's nothing like Varnams. Varnams from the Sarli Varsai, and then of course, Varnams are very, very good exercises. Always play with a metronome, always play with a tanpura and play in a few speeds. It's very important for us to get control, to play with a metronome and for us to remain in tune. It's always important to listen to a tanpura. Um, how many speeds beginners should practice? Look, I would say take the metronome, keep it at a specific speed. So say you're playing a geetam or a varnam. Say it is at 70 BPM. Try and play 70 BPM and the second speed. If you can't get your second speed, you can go to 65 BPM or 60 BPM. So what is important is not how fast you play, but how you're able to play perfectly at your fastest speed. So today you might not be able to play 140 BPM. That's fine. Maybe 130 BPM you can play, but it's important that 130 BPM you're able to play as cleanly as possible. So we can play anything and everything as long as it's slow enough, right? I can play the the most complicated uh, violin concerto as long as I can play it at probably one-tenth of the speed. So the question is, how do we improve our technique so that we can play something uh, at a faster speed? So this is where the metronome comes. The metronome gives us an objective way for us to measure, saying, hey, I played at 70 BPM today. So next week, I'm going to play at 75 BPM, right? The next week, I'm going to play at uh, 80 BPM, okay? So, metronome helps. It's not a question of how many kalas or speed, but it's like what you played last week and how you can improve on it more. Vibrato is one more elective. Vibrato is basically, if this is a pitch, it's a dip. I'm going a bit faster, guys, because we're coming down on one hour. Instagram limits live at one hour, so I'm going to stop at that. So, it's the dip that comes so it involves movement of all these joints and you know this thing happening we'll uh, we'll discuss this in detail in the in the course uh, octaves anish i've already shown that uh, i'll post this video you'll be able to see this uh, it'll be on my IGTV, it'll be on my YouTube, so no worries. Does the Carnatic tuning have any role on getting these techniques? I just signed this. No, I don't think so. You know, when you play a song, obviously it's going to be a bit different when you play it on the Western tuning, but um, Narasimhan sir, whom I learned from, used to play Carnatic songs on Western tuning. So the techniques do not in any way change. Just the way of playing will change. The violin extender I got from Tulsi. Tulsi guitars, so um, um, there in Chandradri Pet, you can contact them. Tulsi guitars is the name. They have stuff for violin as well. It's a nice extender. It helps to keep my back straight when I keep my finger uh, when, when I keep my uh, on the Indian position. Instead of stooping down, I'm able to keep my back straight. So, what processor do you use for electric violin? I use uh, Fractal FX8. There is my processor. Hang on. So that's that's my processor. It's not switched on. That's the processor I use. It's a flagship uh, processor from Fractal Audio. I used to use a Boss, and then now I use a Fractal. Simple DOS software for violin is Sudarshan. Uh, the one that I taught uh, in the in the home studio elective was Presonus Studio One. There is Studio One Prime, which is free, which works on Mac, which works on Windows. So you can use that. 
If you want something even simpler than that, Audacity is also good, but it's a bit too basic for me. So if you if you have a reasonable interest in computers and software, go for Presonus Studio One Prime. It's not that tough to use. Uh, there are a lot of YouTube videos uh, showing you how to do a basic thing on it. Five minutes left, guys. Uh, I'm going to go past the questions. Good question by I am uh, Ashwat uh, brother. How does bow play an important role in Sini songs? So the bowing is very important because what the bow does is the equivalent of our vocal cords while we are singing. So the bow sings the lyrics. So you have Maruvarte Pe, it's all one note. Mama pa 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 pa, Mama pa 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 pa. So what's important is your bowing is changing it. So that differentiates it. So the bowing to bow lyrically and to give the pressure so that the dynamics comes up is very important. The bowing is very very important. It's called the soul of the bowing technique. A lot of us as Carnatic uh, violinists, we think the left hand is the most important, but it's the bowing that's very, very important. Lucky we were there for you in Malaysia. Yes, what a show in Malaysia. That was awesome. Singing and playing violin, I've never done that. Um, I will be IGTVing this video. How to play violin chorus, BGM for violin concert. Okay, guys, I I think there's only a couple of minutes left. I do not teach Western music, Rubini, but I teach a lot of Western techniques and adapt it to Carnatic violinists. So I don't teach Western theory except for the soloing on Western chords elective in which I teach a little bit about chords so that we can play on top of it. Again, I sort of make it into something for uh, Carnatic violinists to understand easily. Um, as far as working with Western violinists goes, uh, apart from all these Western techniques of bowing and left hand, the slide is something that I take, where I can teach them the basic slide and how to learn uh, gamakas. Chin rest, Czech music musicals, Murli musicals. I bought my chin rest in the US when I went there on a tour. But yeah, check it there. Um, Ram Viru, is it advisable to learn the software and then try in the processor for tones? You can do it either way. It doesn't matter, right? Uh, okay, guys, we're coming last two minutes. Again, thank you very much for joining in. Uh, do join the course starting on June 15th. It's going to be an interesting course. It's the second uh, uh, course that I'm doing like this. I had a great fun with the first one. And uh, we're going to be discussing a lot of things in depth, in detail, things that will last with you for months to come, I hope. And this is a, the lockdown time is interesting for us to get all these things started. I'll be having uh, one in the starting in, in the morning and one in the evening so that people from the US, uh, Europe and here, everyone can uh, join in. I'm going to end with Raghuvam Sasuda. I have only one minute, guys. That's all we have time for.